All right, we are on 11.6, solving rational equations. Okay, so this section is kind of like a, a catch-all, meaning that all the skills we have in our in our pockets for algebra, we're gonna throw them at it, throw it at it. All right, so one when one or both sides of a rational equation has a sum or difference, we multiply each side of the equation by the LC, LCD to eliminate the fraction. Okay. So the steps that we follow, steps one, we find the LCD of all denominators, and we may need to factor before doing so. We multiply all terms by the LCD. And then we divide and simplify, okay? Use inverse operations to set one side equal to zero. We factor if possible or necessary. Then we're gonna use a zero product property, which means that we set each product equal to zero and solve for X, okay? Then step seven is check solutions and original rational equation. All right, so we're gonna go through those steps very detailedly in this teacher example. Now, the rest of the examples, we're gonna kind of work it regular, but in the teacher example, we're gonna go pretty detailed. So we're gonna follow step one. So step one is to find the LCD of the denominators. So I look at my denominators, I have X and I have two. Because I have X and two, that means my LCD has to be two X. Okay, step two says to multiply all terms by the LCD. So step two, I'm gonna multiply all terms by LCD. So we have two X times six over X plus two X times X over two equals two X times four. That's what it means to multiply each one. So when I multiply each one, this is going to become 2x times 6. It's going to give me 12x over x. Agree? Plus 2x times x over 2 gives me 4x over 2 equals 2x times 4, 8x. Okay? Step three tells me to divide and simplify. So I'm going to divide and simplify. So simplifying, X's are going to, X divided by X is one. So we're just left with 12, four and two, two leaves us with two X equals eight X. Okay, step four says to use inverse operations to set one side equal to zero. So in step four, we're gonna use inverse operations to set one side equal to zero. So we have 12 plus two X equals eight X. I'm going to, I don't wanna have any negatives. So I'm going to do my math correctly. This is supposed to be two X squared. I dropped my, my square. Doo -doo, my bad. Um, not subtract two X. Teacher showing you that you can make, make mistakes as well. All right, 12 plus two X squared equals eight X. So I'm gonna subtract eight X from both sides. That leaves me with 2x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals zero. Step five says factor if possible. Well, this is this can be factored. I'm going to factor out a two. All right, so another error that teacher made. Um, so right here, 2x times x divided by 2, it should be just 2x squared. And then my 2s are going to cancel out. 
And so then I'm left with no two here and no two here. So really had to fix that. So this is actually a one. There we go. Now it matches the notes. Just making sure you're all alert and paying attention. Yeah. All right, so to factor, what multiplies to give me 12, but adds to give me negative eight. My magic numbers are negative two and negative six, good job. Step six says use zero product property to set each factor equal to zero. So we have X minus two equals zero, X minus six equals zero. And I have X equals two and X equals six. Step seven is your strongly encouraged but optional step. So step seven is to plug into the original. So I'm gonna plug two into the original. So if I have six divided by two plus two divided by two, does it equal four? Well, what's six divided by two? And two divided by two is one. Three plus one is four, yay. Gonna check six. So we have six divided by six plus six divided by two. Six divided by six is one. Six divided by two is three. And yes, it equals four. So that means you are a genius. And despite all the extra nonsense that took place, you did it. All right, questions. Now, as you do this, yes, you can condense steps. You can kind of modify it. Uh, this is just the beginning. So we're gonna do a couple examples together, a few examples, and then a few on your own. So we're gonna start here. So we have two over X plus one over X equals three. So we're starting off simple with an easy LCD. So step one, what is the LCD between these two denominators? X, perfect. So my LCD is X. So that means I'm gonna multiply every term by X. So that's gonna give me X times two over X plus X times one over X equals X times three. Oh man. Okay. So then we are going to multiply, keep multiplying. So I have X times two over X and blah, blah, blah. So three, we're now gonna divide. When you're dividing, that means you can eliminate like terms, right? So I can eliminate XX, XX. And that leaves me with two plus one equals three X. So that gives me three equals three X. And at this point, could we solve? Would you need to go through the technical rest, rest of the steps? Or could you easily tell me what X is at this point? You can easily tell me that X equals what? That's your question. One, okay? So if you can see it, then stop. If not, the steps are there for a reason. So if I was to continue on to step four, I would make one side equal to zero. So I'm gonna subtract three. That gives me zero equals three X minus three. Step five is to factor. So I'm gonna factor this and I get three X minus one equals zero. Step six is using the zero product and take the factor and set it equal to zero. And we get X equals one, right? We're gonna still come to that. 
But if you see at any point what your answer is, that's where you can stop at, okay? Um, seven is checking ourselves. If I plug one in, so I'll have two over one plus one over one, does it equal three? Why, yes, it does. Yay, you did it. Okay. So that's an example of a easy one. Two, it's going to be our, um, I guess our, our little extra one of the day. This is for pre-advanced, okay? So notice here that I have um, one over X minus three equals X minus four divided by X cubed minus 27. Do we all see that? Okay, X cubed minus 27 um, remember how step one, it says that you may need to factor. Notice in this denominator, I'm going to need to factor. And this is sum of cubes. Not sum, this is difference of cubes. So this is difference of cubes. So this factors out to become x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9. Remember, you take the cube root of each term, you square the first one, multiply them together, square the last. So now when I find the LCD, my LCD is going to actually just be the factor of this because I know I have to have x minus 3 and I have to have x squared plus 3x plus 9. Step two is to multiply each term by the LCD. So when I multiply each term, so I'm going to multiply the right, the left side first. So the left, I don't have enough room to write all out horizontally. So the left side has x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9 times 1 over x minus 3. And this is just going to equal my x minus 3s are going to cancel. I'm going to do a little bit 2 and 3 at the same time. And this is going to leave me with x squared plus 3x plus 9 on the left. On the right-hand side, my LCD is the denominator. Does, does that make sense? So on the right-hand side, if I'm multiplying by x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9 times x minus 4 over x cubed minus 27, it's going to cancel out completely each one of these factors because that's what my denominator is factored. So on my right-hand side, I'm just left with x minus 4. So we are left with x squared plus 3x plus 9 on the left equals x minus 4 on the right. Step four is to use inverse operations to get one side equal to zero. So I subtract x and add 4. Subtract x, add 4. And that leaves me with x squared plus 2x plus 13 equals 0. OK, so once we get here, I can ask myself what multiplies to give me 13 and what adds to give me 2. I know for a fact that it's not going to work because 13 is prime, right? 
And so because 13 is prime, that means for step five, where it says to factor, I can't factor, I actually have to use the quadratic formula. I actually used the quadratic formula. So for the quadratic formula, my A is one, my B is two, and my C is 13. So we have X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC divided by two A. Okay. So we end up with X equals negative two plus or minus the square root of four minus 52 divided by two. We actually get to stop here. And the reason why we get to stop here is because four minus 52, what does that create? It creates a negative, right? So it creates negative 48 and negative 48, is that a real solution? No, so the answer would be no real solution. So there would be no real solution. Now, there's an imaginary, but is there a real? No. So we stop here at no real solution. If you'd like to see the quadratic fully worked out, it is available for you on your notes online. But our answer would simply be no real solution. Are you okay with that? Okay, number three. So number three, we have um, two binomials as our denominators. And so when we do our LCD, our LCD has to be both binomials. So our LCD is X minus one and X minus two. Step two says to multiply each term by the LCD. I'm going to multiply each term by the LCD. So I have, I'm going to try to write it all in one. Six times X minus one times X minus two over X minus one plus two X times X minus one times X minus two over X minus two equals I don't think I'm going to make it. 2x minus 1, x minus 2. I made it. In your notes, I did stack. I wrote it vertically. I thought I could squeeze it here horizontally. So now step three is to divide. And dividing just means I get to cross stuff out, right? So you go away, you go away, you go away, you go away. And I'm left with six times X minus two plus two X times X minus one equals two times X minus one times X minus two. And I'm gonna simplify all of this. So when I'm simplifying, that means I'm gonna to have to distribute. So distribute. I'm distributing, I'm gonna distribute, and then I'm gonna to have to FOIL here, right? So distribute, distribute, and FOIL, which is just double distribution. So we have six X minus 12 plus two X squared minus two X equals two X minus two times X minus two. Keep cleaning this up. I have six X and two, negative two X. So that gives me two X squared plus four X minus 12 equals, and I have to FOIL. So two X times X is two X squared. Two X times negative two is negative four X 
negative two times x is negative two x, and negative two times negative two is positive four, right? Okay, um, still simplifying. Step four is to get one side equal to zero. I right, get one side equal to zero. So two X squared is gonna cancel out, right? Because it's on both sides. And that leaves me with four X minus 12 equals negative six X plus four. So I'm gonna add six X and I'm gonna subtract four. And that leaves me with 10 X minus 16 equals zero. <gasps> That's what I did, dang it. All right, step five is to factor. So this is just GCF. So that gives us 10X minus 16, or GCF is two. Leaves us with five X minus eight equals zero. Step six is to take the factors, set them equal to zero. So we end up with five X equals eight. So X equals eight divided by five. And this is gonna look a little different than your online notes because, um, what did I do? Hmm. Um, when I multiplied negative one times negative two, I added them. So I did not get four in the beginning. I ended up with a six. That makes sense, what I did wrong. So, That'll be the, the straw that broke the camel's back. So eight fifth is my answer. If I am not sure about my answer, what should I do? Seven, check yourself. Just plug it back into the original. All right. Okay, so we're at this point where there are more examples that I can do um, to go through those steps with you because there's a variety of ways it's gonna look, but the process is still the same for each one. Um, the question is, do you guys want the additional examples or do you want the time to practice? And then we just kind of check those answers. <laughs> 